Hello everyone, my name is Trisha Lynn from IOHR here in London. Thank you for being with us for another episode of our Human Rights TV. In the aftermath of the attempted military coup in July 2016, Turkey introduced a state of emergency and began to routinely prosecute judges, prosecutors and lawyers and accuse them of belonging to terrorist organisations. According to Arrested Lawyers Initiative, a human rights organization, 1,544 lawyers have been subjected to prosecution. 582 have been arrested and 162 have been sentenced to very lengthy prison sentences. With us today is Karen Balshi, Director of London Advocacy Group. Karen, good to have you with us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Now, at IOHR, we're constantly following the plight of close to 150 journalists who are jailed in Turkey. So we're very glad that you're safe, you're with us in the UK, and you can throw some light onto exactly what's happening to jailed lawyers in Turkey. Now, the information that we have at IOHR is that hundreds of lawyers have been arrested. 34 bar associations have been banned. And in many cases, the property of those lawyers has also been confiscated. Now, my understanding is that some of those lawyers have been prosecuted purely for doing their job, acting with integrity on behalf of their client. It's a bit like a witch hunt, isn't it? It is, actually. In fact, it's not only a witch hunt, it's also a message to the rest of the uh, workers of the uh, legal profession. Uh, so in several cases, uh, the lawyers who are defending their clients or judges who acquit uh, an accused person uh, despite the will of the political uh, governor uh, are actually uh, punished and this gives a message to the other judges and other prosecutors. So many people are afraid to take on uh, cases of people, mainly Kurdish people or Gulenists. Yeah. Uh, I have had my own personal case. My daughter was stuck back in Turkey and I uh, deadly looked for uh, lawyers to defend her. And uh, each time I contacted a lawyer, they said, just you know, keep away from us and keep away from your daughter's case. All you can do is just to harm her. Uh, so, uh, What was the outcome of that case? What happened? Well, well, uh, my daughter had to flee the country. We couldn't find a lawyer. Of course, the government appoints a lawyer to the case, but in most of the cases, the lawyer already knows that if he or she, um, you know, uh, sincerely defends the accused, then she or he is going to find herself behind the bars. We yeah. have had cases, for example, a famous journalist, uh, Friederike Gerding, uh, that journalist, uh, she was accused back in 2015, I'm speaking. It is not after the coup. This was before the coup. She was accused of um, collaborating with PKK and so on. She was detained. A Turkish judge saw that there was nothing really uh, as evidence. So he acquitted her. Yeah. Soon, he was dismissed from the position. Uh, 15 years of working in the uh, jurisprudence. He was dismissed. He was dismissed. And he claimed that the, um, a lawyer which, which was very close to the Erdogan family personally um, uh, spoke to him and uh, said that he, you know, he's, not, he's not going to have a good end in the country. So he fled the country. He fled the country before the coup. Yeah. But after that, uh, another prosecutor made up evidence against him and he is now being sued for being a mastermind behind the coup. So the message is very clear, isn't it? Show the line or this will happen to you as well. Indeed. And, and unfortunately, um, the rest of the Turkish judiciary, you know, you have already given numbers, you know, uh, the, 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 you know already uh, one-fifth of the Turkish uh, law, um, judges and prosecutors are dismissed, you know. Yeah. After the coup, we had uh, 4,463 4, judges and prosecutors dismissed. This is out of 15,000. Is there any independent judiciary left in Turkey? No, unfortunately. Not None. It's not independent. It's not impartial. Uh, it's not only the issue of uh, independency. The, the, the judges and prosecutors, they know that uh, they know what will happen to them if they decide uh, despite the will of the government. So they always play to the hands of the government. In some cases, even particularly the prosecutors are in a race 
of finding more Gulenist or finding more Kurdish separatist and so on. So they accuse people who has nothing to do with the Gulen movement or with the separatist Kurdish movement to be a part of those movements or to at least uh, collaborate. The Turkish legal uh, dictionary has this term, you know, uh, collaborating with a terrorist organization without knowing. Uh, this is an oxymoron. Yeah. But many people are behind the bars with this uh, sentence in their indictment. So it's just a threat for everybody, isn't it? It, it, it is a threat for everybody. It is, in fact, uh, it, it is not only destroying the legal profession, it's also destroying the very foundational stones of the fabric of the society. Now, the Law Society of England and Wales are among many legal bodies around the world who have condemned many of these arrests. And they're appealing for international solidarity. Now, we know that the people that are behind bars, the human rights defenders, the lawyers, the journalists, are having to suffer this inhumane treatment at the hands of Turkish officials. And they desperately need international help to try and secure their release. But do you think that any form of international pressure will have any effect whatsoever on Erdogan and the security forces? I don't think it will have any impact on Erdogan himself, but it may have an impact on the judges and prosecutors. Uh, I have been lobbying uh, the legal uh, organizations all around the world on um, starting some kind of cases against lawyers and prosecutors that are willingly uh, co collaborating with the dictat dictatorship in Turkey. Like, for example, in my own case, I'm not speaking about my, myself, okay. but Ahmet Altan, Mehmet Altan, and Nazlı Ilıcak. These are three secular-minded left-wing... Uh, well, Nazlı Ilıcak is a, is a center guy, lady. These are all older than 70 years old. They are behind the bars, life term, uh, all because of what they have said on TV broadcast or what they have written in their newspaper. And of course, being called a terrorist comes with between seven and a half and a 43 year jail sentence. Yeah. It's yeah. outrageous, isn't it? It is outrageous. And these people uh, have already been sentenced. Uh, and yes, law society, several, uh, you know, uh, media organizations from all around the world that they attended their cases and so on. But nothing has been said up until now about the prosecutor and judges that are willingly collaborating with the uh, orders of the government. For example, I suggested, let us, let us not invite them to international events. And unfortunately, European Human Rights Court is not collaborating. This is the highest body in Europe. Why are they not collaborating? Why are they taking a back seat in such a serious issue? Well, first of all, this is a huge political issue. European Human Rights Court is not only a legal body, it's also a political body. Mm -hmm. It's a part of a European uh, family of institutions. And they are, being, they are taking uh, pressure from other bodies of the European uh, family. Uh, and the numbers of cases that are coming to the European Human Rights Court are huge, mm -hmm. you know, hundreds of thousands. So, and the, the, the court is, is a small body. Uh, it has limited number of uh, people to work, limited budget and so on. They have their own uh, you know, uh, benchmarks. They say we can see this much of cases, others will be rejected. So we shouldn't be expecting soon that justice will be served, if not in Turkish courts, but in European courts. It won't be. Okay. Is there anything in the Turkish anti-terrorism legislation that justifies such actions against lawyers, academics, human rights activists who are branded as terrorists and in many cases as part of the Gulen movement? Well, the point is uh, the, the Turkish anti-terrorism law was already very vague uh, by means of its definition of what is terrorism. And it was already uh, blurred by means of uh, what does it mean to be a member of an organization? So the Turkish anti-terrorism law, against which uh, international bodies have been lobbying for years now, and in fact, the European Union made a precondition of changing of that law for the continuation of European Union membership uh, bit, and yet Turkey didn't abide by, the, uh, by that precondition. Um, the, uh, the definition of membership does not necessitate your personal intention to become a member 
or personal knowledge that you became a member of an organization. So you can be a member of a terrorist organization without intending to be so and without knowing to be so. Uh, so many people are behind the bars without knowing that they are members of a terrorist organization. Let us see the Gulenist organization, for example. Uh, many people have been a member of the Gulen movement uh, years before it was defined by the Turkish political authority mm -hmm. as a terrorist organization. I, of course, do not accept that it is a terrorist organization, but let us say that it is within Turkey. Of course, the uh, Gulen movement, just for the benefit of our viewers at home, are um, accused of being behind the failed military coup yeah. in uh, 2016. Well, in fact, it has been uh, accused of being behind several things, including uh, earthquakes uh, in Turkey. Among the arrested lawyers was a head of a bar association who was given a very lengthy prison sentence. He was given a 10-year prison sentence. When you have a prison sentence like that, 10 years handed out to you, what recourse do you have? Can you appeal? Are there any possibility of pardons? Well, the point is this. When the uh, lower court, the magistrate court, in uh, equivalent of UK magistrate courts, gives a decision, you will, of course, have a right to go to the court of appeals. But the point is, if you took more than six years and ten months, uh, the appeal process will be uh, taken care of when you are behind the bars. Okay. If you have, if you were given more than six years and ten months, and this is membership to a terrorist organization, this means that the person in question was not regarded as a member, but as a manager or a director uh, or a leader of a terrorist organization. By the way, in parentheses, I have to say, the only evidence against this particular guy to be a leader of a terrorist organization is the fact that he was the head of a bar association. Mm -hmm. So he says, if you are a head of a bar association, and also a Gulenist or a Kurdish separatist, this means you are not a, just a plain member, you are a, you are a manager. So. This becomes uh, more than 10 years sometimes, and in this case it is. Uh, well, first of all, this person, even if uh, the Court of Appeal decides to acquit him altogether, it will take another five years to cleanse uh, his uh, career, turn back to his career. Uh, his family will never be able to leave Turkey, will never be able to have a you know, uh, travel right, travel documents outside Turkey. So it's not just he or she that is being punished. They're all the, victims, the whole, aren't they? the, the whole family is going to be victims. Karen Belchi, we appreciate your time today. Thanks for joining us today on IOHR. And thank you for joining us for another episode of our Human Rights TV, putting human rights into focus. Join us again next time. And don't forget, you can keep right up to date on our social media feed. Until next time, goodbye.